Keegan Bradley wins the BMW Championship, putting him in serious contention to making his own Ryder Cup team. Uh, if he doesn't make it, do you think Keegan should pick himself, seeing he got screwed over last year in Rome? Uh, leave a comment below. Let's break the swing down. Okay, so starting with the face on view, uh, first off, the camera angle is slightly off. So you can see his feet are aimed slightly to the left. That's going to create a little parallax there. So just take that into account as we're looking at some of these things in the swing. Um, left shoulder relationship to the left hip, we can maybe say is slightly outside of each other. And the result of that is it's going to create more level shoulders okay if we look at what xander did xander had his left hip and left shoulder directly on top of each other he had more tilt in the shoulders and ultimately that relationship is going to determine uh where the upper body and lower body starts from okay um, it's always interesting to see how a golfer starts how they manage that relationship throughout the swing and ultimately what we want to see is by P5 or left arm parallel on a downswing, we want to see those two points stacked or aligned on top of each other. There's a lot of benefits, which we'll talk about as we get later into the swing. Moving on to the foot flare. Keegan has, uh, we can maybe call it 15 to 20 degrees of foot flare. Once again, comparing it to Xander, Xander had his feet much square. Okay, and if you remember what I said in that analysis, I recommended um, that the majority of golfers have a little bit of flair, okay? So I think Keegan's kind of a great model for most of you to follow at home. And the reason is by having the feet slightly flared, that's gonna give you more range of motion in the hip joints to, to work with. And as a byproduct, you're gonna be able to make a better turn with your pelvis. So definitely a good model to follow here. Uh, his grip looks pretty neutral. So I think I can see two knuckles on his left hand. And then if we draw a line up uh, from the V of his right hand, you can see it points in the vicinity of his right shoulder. Uh, so pretty neutral, you know, taking into account, we do see uh, a little cup here in this lead wrist, which will monitor as we move into the rest of the backswing. Okay, so moving to the down the line view, the first thing that sticks out is if I draw a line down from his hip bone, okay, straight down, you can see his pelvis is set up well behind his heels. Now. Typically, what I like to see is I like to see um, these two points, okay, right there and right there aligned on top of each other at a dress, okay? So if I draw a line up from the ankles, uh, you can see that we have a little bit of gapping there, okay? So the pelvis is uh, set up behind the ankles. Now, typically what I see with this relationship is a golfer that's set up further back um, a lot of times as the golfer turns to the top of the swing, the pelvis will actually start to drift closer to the ball, okay? And that makes sense, right? If you're set up and you're already using all of the available range of motion, when you start to turn, if there's no more room to go, then uh, your body's going to find the or take the path of least resistance. Um, so going to be interesting to kind of watch that pelvis as he moves through the backswing. Uh, looking at the shoulder joint, okay, so if I draw a line down at 90 degrees, you can see that the um, upper part of his arm hangs on that side of the line, and typically I like that relationship because it does create more space from his hands to his pelvis, okay? So he's good in the arm category. Because the pelvis is back, there's not as much space there, uh, but Keegan's a pretty good rotator, and uh, ultimately at a dress, um, we like to see some level of space uh, so that the golfer has range of motion to actually rotate through. Um, if we're set up too close to the ball, uh, it might make that a little bit more difficult. Um, pelvis looks pretty good, looks pretty, pretty neutral, give or take. Um, looking at his lumbar spine, it looks fairly, fairly neutral. A uh, little bit of round or curve in his upper part of his back. And then uh, we can maybe say his chin is slightly up, okay, ever so slightly. So definitely, uh, you know, has a straighter looking posture. Um, I personally would like to see the chin a little bit more down, 
okay for most golfers just so that they can look out of the middle part of their eye it puts less stress on uh, their vision um, but like i said this guy just won and i think that's the cool part about golf is is looking at different ways uh, people can get it done and figuring out what's really important what's not um, the last thing i'll talk about from the down the line view is it appears that uh he sets up with the hands maybe slightly on the lower side. Now, I do think part of it is because his pelvis is so far back, it gives that distorted look. Um, but it's definitely, it definitely doesn't look like a Bryson, right? Where his his hands are higher. Um, you know, he, he definitely looks like he's starting in a, in a lower position. Keegan has a lot of wrist set. Uh, in the in the backswing, which will be interesting to look at. Um, I definitely think there's a correlation uh, between that and how he's setting up here from the down the line view. Okay, so off the ball, uh, Keegan has a lot of lateral movement. So we can see the points of where he's starting from. He makes a shift to the right. Um, he continues to wind up. He has a nice recentering move. Okay, and for those of you that aren't familiar with what a recentering move is, you can see about uh, waist high. His pelvis has shifted a few inches. Okay, now the key to the recentering move is in the second half of the backswing. You want to see the pelvis uh, end up in between the lines that he started. Okay, so you can see that the pelvis has now returned uh, in between the lines that he actually started. So that's a, a pretty solid recentering move. If you're going to have lateral motion in there, um, that move is is pretty important. Um, he does hold a little bit more flex in his right leg, okay, so you can kind of see the shape of his right leg at the top, uh, a little bit more uh, flex in there, and ultimately, I think this is part of the reason why we see his head actually go down in the backswing, okay, so not much up move uh, in Keegan's swing. Now, um, from the down the line setup view, I mentioned something about uh, having more wrist set in the backswing. And one of the things that we see a, a little bit differently from a Scotty Scheffler or a Bryson or a Tom Kinn is Keegan has a lot more wrist set. Okay, And you start to see this uh, right around P3 uh, is the first signs of it. Um, but if I draw a line from the left arm and then I draw a line at 90 degrees, you can see that uh, his shaft is on this side of 90 degrees, okay? Um, the players that I mentioned, uh, a lot of them are much more wider and more unhinged at this point in the swing. So definitely much more wrist set. You can see as he moves uh, to the top of the swing, he's loading it even more. Uh, you can see that uh, lead wrist moving a little bit into extension there. Um, this kind of reminds me of the position I, I personally was in, in in 2021. So it's it's a pretty powerful position there. Uh, wrists are loaded. You do start to see a little bit of uh, flex in that lead arm. I think that's natural. Um, but ultimately, there's a lot of advantages to this. You can create a, a lot of tension through that lead arm, the upper part of your back, your core. Um, especially this this lead side lat um, if the arms collapse too much and there's not much wrist set in there um, pretty much all that tension goes away so i think he's in a, a very strong position here and then flipping over to the down the line view okay um you see him move back kind of go to p2 give or take you can see at this point he still has a little bit of that that cup that we pointed out at address and then he continues to move up. We know the wrist is, or the club is setting a little bit earlier. Okay, and when we get him to the top, you can see uh, he has a little bit of extension in that lead wrist. Okay, so um, those two things go together. Typically, when we see a player hinging the club, um, there's going to be a little bit of extension in that lead wrist. A player that keeps it flatter, like a Colin Morikawa, isn't going to be able to hinge the club at, as much. So those two things go hand in hand. Um, you can see the, the right leg, a little bit more flex, as I pointed out. And then the other thing that we talked about was the relationship of the pelvis at address. Okay, so as we move back... I want you to focus in on this point here. Okay, so as we progress him into the backswing, he starts to turn, starts to turn. 
um, and you see his body right at the end of the backswing starting to drift ever so slightly away from that that wall okay so that's one of the byproducts of just running out of room okay so um, typically if a golfer sets up with those two points aligned uh, we will see that right hip continuously move back in the backswing but nonetheless, um, like I said, I'm not trying to make this <laughs> sound like uh, it's a negative thing. I think ultimately, you know, when we look at the golf swing, we have all these different variables and uh, it's how you can match them up that makes a swing good or bad. Um, one thing we did talk about at address was his grip was on the neutral side, maybe even a little weak. So him having a lot of wrist set with that extension, okay, in his lead wrist is going to get his face a little bit more on the open side okay so he does have a a long backswing so we, we start to lose sight of that face um, but you can see it's it's not looking as up at the sky as some of the players that we've analyzed okay so definitely a little bit more on the open side of the spectrum uh, and this is why i wanted to analyze keegan's swing it's a little bit different than a lot of the the swings that we've looked at earlier this year um, I do think it's a powerful swing, especially as we start to move into the downswing, you see um, a, a pretty solid change of direction, right? So you, at this point, um, we start to see the backswing being overlapped into the downswing uh, from the change of direction, right? So he's going to the top, okay? We start to see the lower body moving in the opposite direction, okay? So pelvis is rotating as the arms are still moving back, okay? So we see that overlapping right there. Um, that's a, a really important move. And we talked about this a little bit with Jake Knapp. Um, that starts to create a, a pretty big stretch and you can see his shirt right here, okay? So from uh, the right shoulder down to the left hip, that's basically loading a rubber band, okay? So all that tissue all those muscles are being wound up okay and uh, as he moves into the downswing okay continues to lead with that lower body so knees are square by p5 we like to see that okay by left arm parallel i like to see those knees uh, squared up lower bodies leading the way okay which is good shoulders aren't opening too quickly so you can see at this point right here uh, his shoulders are actually pointed uh, a little bit to the right, even though his, his lower body has a lot of rotation. And that relationship is what allows the club shaft to work through the, the forearm, okay? So he's not coming over the top, even though he's rotating. Club continues to move down, nice delivery, okay? Uh, and we've, if we stop it somewhere in the impact vicinity, okay, uh, it's in between frames, one of the things you'll see is, is Keegan has a beautiful right arm, okay? So a lot of bend to it. Um, and that's really important because we wanna make impact, okay? We wanna strike the golf ball with a bent right arm and it's going to straighten as we move to low point, okay? So you can see that right arm going from bent and straightening, okay? Um, one thing to point out is Keegan's left leg is a little bit more flexed at impact okay so if we were comparing it to some of these long drive guys that leg would be straight by that point actually a little earlier so a lot of those guys are straight by uh, this point right here so maybe uh, some late force timings from a vertical standpoint um, but because he has all that lower body rotation through the transition it allows the hands to exit around his body okay so we see that club exiting just below the left shoulder, uh, left leg is now getting straight. Um, overall, I think this is a, a pretty solid move from the down the line view. So back to the face on view, okay? We, we pointed out he had a lot of wrist set through the transition. We know from the down the line view, he's got that nice overlapping going. Um, and Keegan does a great job maintaining what I call the power package, okay? And we, we heard Hogan talk about this, uh, and I know there's mixed opinions on this, but ultimately what we wanna see is from the top of the swing, um, there's a short duration of time where this arm um, is actually loading across the chest, okay? We call this lead shoulder adduction, okay? 
Um, and like I said, Hogan called this the power package. You can see at this point in the swing, that relationship is still pretty much intact. Okay, so not much changing. Uh, DJ is, is a good example of uh, a similar swing to where um, those angles are pretty much being maintained to this point in the swing. And ultimately, that's going to create some flex in the right elbow. Remember from the down the line view, we know uh, he kept that right elbow bent very long at a downswing. And ultimately, what that's doing is that's playing a role in, in these wrist angles uh, being a little bit more acute, right? Uh, comparing it to Scotty Scheffler, Scotty Scheffler would be more uh, in that vicinity right there, okay? Uh, so definitely a swing that's built for speed. Um, because he is creating that nice overlapping, two things start to happen, okay? And the first thing that we can look at is this right hip. So by creating that overlapping, his right hip is actually gonna stay higher than the left hip through the transition. This is really, really important because what that allows the golfer to do um, is actually create more efficient right lateral bend. Now, I do wanna just point out uh, something as I'm looking at this. We talked about those stretch marks down his shirt, but you could even focus in right here. I mean, all that shirt is being stretched all the way down to the left hip, okay? Um, now, it's not being stretched the entire swing, right? You see it's being stretched uh, into the early part of the downswing and then eventually it starts to let go. Um, but going back to that right hip staying higher than the left, ultimately what we start to see is we start to see the spine curving slightly this way, okay? Ever so slightly, uh, we're creating right lateral bend. A lot of times I like to look at this left uh, shirt seam, okay? So if we see a little bit of uh, a roundness to that left side, that's typically what I like to see. I like to see that it's it's pretty much up and down by that point. And remember what I said about the upper center and the lower centers, okay? By this point, uh, we can assume that his, his upper body and, and lower center are pretty much stacked on top of each other, okay? Um, that's another thing that helps us store lag. If the golfer is, is tipping back, okay, away from the target this way, a lot of times the result is those wrist angles will get thrown out much earlier, okay? Um, so really efficient lower body movement there. Um, as we move deeper in the swing, take into account that left arm is now firing off the chest. So we see... Um, the angle between the arm and the chest actually getting wider now. So think of it as like an alligator's mouth through the transition, that alligator's mouth closing, and then it's starting to open up. And that's where um, we see the club starting to release, okay? So has a pretty, uh, has forward hands at impact, okay? So you can see the hands are leading, coming into the ball, which is great. Uh, once again, I pointed out from the, down the line view that he does have a flexed left leg at address. So slightly late on the verticals, uh, but nonetheless, he gets it going. Um, and overall, I, I think this is just a, a pretty solid overall swing to look at from an efficiency standpoint. Um, I do wanna just point out that um, also looking at his left hip, as he starts to rotate, you can see that the, the left hip stays inside the heel. That's one of the other things that helps keep that right hip a little bit higher, okay? Um, so really good stuff. You know, I actually felt bad for Keegan last year. It, he had an amazing year and I felt he kind of got snubbed from a Ryder Cup position. Um, but cool to see that uh, he's getting a second chance to be a part of this team. Um, I say that, but he's been a part of many Ryder Cup teams and obviously loves that environment. He's, he's great for energy and team chemistry. Um, it will be interesting to see if he ends up making his, his own team or picks himself. That will be a very interesting dynamic from uh, a captain's standpoint. Uh, I'm sure it adds a lot of pressure as well. 
Um, but overall, a great swing to look at. A lot of speed and power variables in there um, that I think will keep him playing the game for a long time. If you enjoyed this analysis, be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're new and want to see more of our content. Uh, and leave a comment below. Uh, let me know. Do you think uh, Keegan should pick himself or uh, should he just maintain uh, being a captain? Appreciate all the support and uh, we'll see everyone next time.